Today on Sugar Spun Round, I'm sharing a super easy recipe for avocado salsa. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I have a recipe for you that's a little bit greener than the ones I usually share. This is an avocado salsa recipe that is super simple to make, great for potlucks, great for cookouts, great for eating by the chipful or spoonful alone in your kitchen, I don't judge. Now, of course, the first ingredient you are going to need is avocados. We are going to be using two large ripe avocados, and I'm just going to go ahead and dice these. Now, if you're at the supermarket and you wanna make avocado salsa later today, and you wanna make sure that you're grabbing avocados that are ripe, here's a neat little trick that I use to make sure the firmness is perfect for using for avocado salsa. Now, if you lightly press into the avocado, the texture should feel exactly the same as if you were lightly pressing the tip of your nose. So just lightly touch the tip of your nose, lightly touch the avocado, make sure nobody's watching you in the supermarket. If they feel the same, your avocado is perfect. Now the easiest way that I've found to dice an avocado is to leave it in its shell or skin or whatever and gently cut it into nice little squares, dice sized pieces whatever size you want the avocado in your avocado salsa to be. Just make sure when you're using the knife, you don't press too hard and cut into your hand. And grab your bowl and then just use a spoon to just spoon that into your serving bowl. Here's a nice little trick to pop that seed out of that avocado. Set your avocado down. If you have a sharp knife, just kind of firmly whack that into the seed, twist it out, get rid of that seed. There's a lot of chopping and dicing for today's recipe, so I'll probably speed things up a little bit for you. That way you don't have to spend forever watching me cut avocados. Make sure you get everything. Avocados are expensive and it's hard to find a good ripe one. I mean, I feel like they're ripe for like 30 seconds and then they go bad. So you wanna make sure you get everything you can out of that skin. This one's actually not quite as soft as I would like, but we've been doing grocery pickup recently, so this is what I have. We're gonna make it work. Next, you'll wanna grab three Roma tomatoes. You could use a different type of tomato. I like Romas because they're great for using in salsas. And I'm just going to cut these, remove the seeds, and then dice them into small pieces. I really wish I had some bright, beautiful, juicy, garden-grown tomatoes to show you, but unfortunately, all I have is these grocery store tomatoes. As with any recipe that uses fresh produce, for best results, you wanna use the freshest ingredients possible. She said, scooping the seeds out of her store-bought tomato. Now, because I'm making a salsa and I'm going to be dipping some chips in this, I like to cut my pieces to be pretty small. That way you can get a lot of variety on every chip. If you can get homegrown tomatoes, please do it. These are making me so sad right now. Next, we'll add one third cup of finely diced red onion. I prefer to use red onion, but I have used white onion in the past. That would be fine. Let's get rid of that flaky outer layer. Just potent onion. We'll measure out one third cup. Going a little heavy because I really like onion. We'll also be adding a third cup of fresh cilantro. You wanna finely chop this as well. This is where Zach says, I am out. There's no way he's gonna eat this, which is fine because it means more for me. Next, you're going to need one tablespoon of finely chopped jalapeno pepper. Usually this is about one jalapeno for me. You will want to scrape out the seeds. You can add some to the salsa, but keep in mind, even a few can take this from a nice, mellow, mild salsa to something very spicy. So add seeds sparingly. I had a really bad incident one year when I made fresh salsa and I cut about 15 jalapenos with my bare hands and my fingertips burned for literally for days. They felt like they were on fire. So always be careful when chopping jalapeno. If you wanna wear gloves, I won't judge you. That's a bit more than a tablespoon, but we'll go ahead and add it for a little extra heat. It's the nice thing about things like salsa is you can really adjust them so easily to suit your personal preference. So we need a little extra flavoring for our salsa. We've added all our veggies, but I like to add a little sauce or dressing, a little extra flavor. I like to start with two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lime juice. Now to get the most out of your lime, I like to just roll it between my palm and a firm surface. Just makes it extra juicy, easier to squeeze the juice out of it. And I'm usually able to get all of the juice that I need out of a single lime. 
If you're using store-bought lime juice, I recommend starting with just one tablespoon and then taste testing because I found that the store-bought can have a more sharp, acidic, kind of bitter taste. It's a little bit more potent than what I usually get out of a fresh lime. Now, the next thing we're going to add is one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, a teaspoon of sugar, it's granulated sugar, three-fourths teaspoon of salt. Might have just gotten my sugar and salt mixed up there. It's hard to tell when they're in those little dishes. But we're also going to be adding a half teaspoon of ground black pepper and a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Now I'll whisk everything together with my cute little baby whisk here. And we'll just drizzle this over our avocado mixture. Now we'll gently toss everything together so it's well combined. I don't like to use my spoon for this just because it's a little rougher on the avocado. I like to just use a spatula and gently toss everything together. Now, of course, you always need to taste test to make sure that your salt and pepper are just right. So we'll go ahead and give this a little sample. Mm. Perfect. Okay, so for best results, you would actually want to cover your avocado salsa and let it chill in the refrigerator for about an hour. That's going to help the flavors really develop and meld together. Now, if you've worked with avocado before, you know they tend to brown really fast. So I do recommend serving this within 24 hours of, ser of preparing everything. Now, if you guys like today's recipe, you are going to love my classic homemade salsa recipe. Be sure to check that one out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.